Welcome to the Building Blocks of Bass. My name is Bob Debu. Really glad you're here uh, checking out this video. It's Monday, five o'clock here in St. Louis. It's a beautiful day. So we're gonna get into some practicing today. We're gonna check out um, Israel Crosby lick on But Not For Me. I'll show this throughout the session, but from this very super famous recording that you probably know, Ahmad Jamal's seminal But Not For Me live at the Pershing. Uh, it's called a few different things. So my Jamal Trio live at the Pershing It's one of them. And uh, just great tracks on there. It's Israel Crosby, Brunel Fournier, and of course Ahmad Jamal on the piano. So we're going to study one of Ahmad, I mean one of Israel's uh, classic licks today. Dissect it, move it through a couple different keys, figure out why it works. Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to listen to it. I don't want to like get anybody's copyright, you know, up in anybody's copyright issues. So Go and listen to this if you've never heard it before. It's a life changer, especially for a bass player. Hearing Israel, uh, hearing Israel Crosby, just his beat and the way he plays is something else entirely. So we're going to be studying that today. And uh, you can uh, something new this week is that you can check out the links to all the uh, the transcriptions, the uh, the the the, uh, the worksheets that we use throughout today's course on a link below here. Uh, you can also check out a link for Open Studio's new course, Your Sound is Your Signature, uh, by Christian McBride. And we've got some news coming up that my own course, entitled to Building Blocks of Bass, is coming out very soon. We were hoping to get it out this week, but we're uh, just building tension, building excitement about it, and we're going to hopefully release it next week sometime. Uh, but it's in, it's in the final stages, so we've got the, the, the filming done, and very excited for that to come out. So keep your eyes open for that my course entitled The Building Blocks of Bass. Super excited about it. We go over so many things that, you know, uh, a fresh bass player might need to know. The parts of the bass, how the bass makes sound, how to stand, how to pluck the bass, right hand, left hand. Just a bunch of, uh, you know, information that's, that's just crucial to know as a, as a bass player just getting started. So, but there's more on that to come. So, I see we've got a few folks watching, again, we're checking out Israel Crosby's bass line on Ahmad Jamal's Live at the Pershing album. Sorry, they got a glare on that, but you can see that, right? So this is a really super cool record, every bit of it. Uh, of course, his most famous track, Poinciana, is on side B of this, uh, of this album. But, I mean, all the tunes are, I mean, they're all just bangers. They're super good, you know, but not for me. Sorry with the Fringe on top, Moonlight in Vermont, like... Nobody else has done it, you know? So, without further ado, let's get into it. So if, you, if you've not heard this recording, again, please go check it out. But we're gonna sp specifically be checking out But Not For Me, and just one lick that Israel plays in there. And I'm sure you, you, if you know the recording, you probably already know the lick I'm talking about. Uh, it's probably not news to you, but. It's a, it's a break in the melody. Ahmad plays the, the melody and leaves some space for uh, Israel to fill it up. And throughout this track, there's just this interplay where Israel's adding such really uh, beautiful uh, like interludes between what Ahmad is doing. And Ahmad's leaving him tons of space. It's just beautiful. Now, we're studying the lick today, which is really, um, which is really cool. But also what's really cool with this is going through the whole track. I mean, this is such a great bass line, every note that Israel plays is just beautiful on, on every recording I've ever heard of him, um, especially a bunch of the Ahmad Jamal, you know, uh, the Ahmad Jamal stuff, uh, Live at the Alhambra, you know, uh, Live at the Pershing 1 and 2, just a bunch of classic albums that he's on, and his bass lines are just all fantastic. So here is that lick that I just played, and it's written out in bass clef, so it's leading to the two chord. You see that D at the end? Okay, so this is over C major. And then they're playing uh, the melody um, in the way that they're doing it. You can play But Not For Me a few different ways. But they're playing the first chord as a D7, which is kind of different than, than uh, a lot of uh, other versions. And sometimes they do go 1, 6, 2, 5 uh, later on. But uh, this leads back into, this is from the one chord. So that's the lick, and I want to di dissect it today. 
So of course, there's some great rhythm in there. And then the note choices that he's using is very specific and it leads in, in directions, you know, we know where it's going. So let's just, let's just uh, pare this down a little bit. Basically, this lick is all coming from a C major triad, descending, G, E, C, G. Now if you listen to the lick, ah, sorry. There's G, the goal there is E, the goal there is C, right? And next, the next goal uh, is that G, right? So G, E, C, D, O, leading there, right? So if we go back and look at the original lick, we've got G, E is the point, you know, but it's delayed. So he's going 6, 5, 4, 3. 2, 1, 6, 5 again here, leading to the next chord, right? So all of that is built around this. Right? And so my goal today too to practice is to, is to get this lick under our fingers in C, to dissect it, and then of course move it around in different keys, but also to expand the range that we're using, okay? So that we can make this lick our own, put it in our playing, reference Israel Crosby, you know, like when I hear somebody put in this lick, I'm like, that's what's up, because that's Israel. I mean, that's Israel's you know classic line from the recording. So you can tell that people have checked out you know checked out the record when you hear people playing this. Now I also want to I said I think I said extend the range. So we're going to work on this line going even further and take the concept that Israel is using here a step further. Okay, uh, and you hear people like Ray Brown, you hear Paul Chambers doing stuff like this. This is nothing. Um, this is nothing like new, but the way that, that Israel is doing it is just classic, right? So if we take, the, take that, that C major triad and extend it now down to the low G down here, let's, let's do that now. Here, I'm going to get my metronome going here too. So the recording is close to 130 beats per minute. So I've got my metronome on 65 here. I got my calculator, did the math. Half of 130 is, uh, is uh, 65 apparently. So this is beats two and four. And correct me if I'm wrong, so the comments are over there, okay? So eventually I want to take this line and drop it down even further. Israel does it here. But I want to be able to move this into my own playing, uh, so I want to extend the range and know what he's doing and dissecting it. So knowing this triad is super, super crucial too, right? So. We're also going to be working on this in B flat. So let's go ahead. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. So the line, the line here, it starts off this way. And what we hear there is a delay like getting to the five, a delay getting to the three, a delay getting to the root and to the fifth, right? And so what is Israel doing there? He's using a scale step above. We're in the key of C, okay? So to get to five, he is letting us hear A, but it wants to pull to the G, right? And the same thing to the third. So what's, what's next in the scale above E? E is the third, so we'd play the fourth note of the C major scale. One, two, three, four, right? Four, three, and then two, one, two, one. So all together, and this is in C, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and again, six, five. Now, if we want to keep going, so this is the scale step above, right? If we want to keep going and extend our range so that we can put this into our own vocabulary and get a deeper, you know, a deeper perspective on what's happening here, take the same idea and go further down on the bass, okay? And this is something, uh, you know, that, uh, that we talked a little bit about in the bebop guided practice session as well using scale steps above to get, you know, like to move in the right direction. So, so all together, let's take it now from this G to this G and then all the way down to this G. So we'll do this in three octaves. So one, two, one, two, three, four. Try it with me. If you've got your bass out, if you've got whatever instrument you're doing, you sing it. Try it. This is six five four three two one six five four three two one 
six, five. One, two, three, four. hear how the weight even though it's uh you know that we're landing on the uh the strong notes of the chord or the our goal notes they're on upbeats right so it gives us this kind of like forward momentum too so it gives this weight that's like moving forward super cool right because if it was like this two three four It would be cool too, but that's a different, it's got a whole different vibe to it. Just even moving it, shifting it by a half step, right? Cool. Okay. So the next piece of the puzzle here that I've got laid out for today, at least, is to, um, to play the scale steps from above, but then also play the chord tone or a triad, uh, triad note below where we're heading. And what that means is that we're doing, we're taking this from the original lick, right? So we're doing six, five, root four, three. So you could do. So here I'm using the note from the triad below. I'm basically doing, if I was to pare this down even more, G, C, E, G, C, like broken, broken thirds in the triad, right? So G, C. But I want to put that scale step above it now. A G F. I'm sorry. C F E G B e, C E A G. So you see how that works? You're adding that extra thing in there. I've heard Ray do this a bunch. Ray Brown do this a bunch in his solos, right? Um, and if you're just joining us, we're talking about the great Israel Crosby today, one of the greatest bass players of all time, specifically from this recording. Yes, live at the Pershing. Pershing zooming in, right? So, um, and we'll get back to the original lick too. We're just dissecting it here, right? So let's take this. Let's take this at tempo. Again, this is 130, which is roughly the, the tempo that they're at on the recording. Again, go listen to this. Play along with it. It's just so good. So let's play this lick. One, two, one, two, three, go. Again. Make sense? Let's go ahead and now, hopefully you've got the concept of that, let's try to move this down a step into B flat, okay? Because I want to move this around in a few different keys and get the vibe of it um, so that we can, again, use this in our own bass lines, right? So if we, if we back up a little bit, we're thinking about how we're going to do this lick up to this point in the key of B flat, so a whole step down. Now you remember this is all coming from a major triad descending. We did five, three, one, five, three. And you can keep going when we extend it, right? So let's do that in B flat really quick. So one, two, just half notes of triad is what I'm trying to say. So one, two, one, two, three, go. Okay, remember it was here when we were in C. B flat, three, four. Now let's put the scale step above each one of those. So if we're heading to F, what's the scale step above F? Right? Above D is E flat. So we're doing six, five, four, three, two, one, six, five, four, three. And you could keep going, of course. Two, one, six, five. Let's try that in time. One. Two, one, two, B flat, go. Cool. Now let's try adding in that uh, that triad note below where we're heading. So what that means is like I'm going to hit. I could hit D, and then six five. I'm hitting the one of the notes in the triad, the one that's just below the F, right? So D. I'm heading to F, but I'm going to stick that whole step above, or the scale step above, right there. And how would we do that in B flat? B flat, E flat, D, right? Now what's below the B flat that would be nice is that F. F, C, B flat, right? D, G, F, and you can keep going. Does that make sense?
make sense? So if we put all that together in time, it's one, two, one, two, three, four. I played a G down there instead of the F. So that's the momentum. That's what that's what Israel's doing there, right? Cool. Uh, and we'll we'll get into some different keys too. Let's check this out though. Here's the next one of the next steps inside the line. Again, the line sounds like this. Right? Inside of that, if you dissect that line a little bit, and I want to I want to check out I want to talk too about what fingerings I'm thinking of here. So when I'm going up to the original lick, I'm I'm I tend to like to go three one three one one two two one, and then I like to block this off where I'm going. And that way I've got this, this shape that, that always works. So back to this, what I'm talking about. If, I, if I'm going to play this, the, just the triad triplets, right? Because that's what's inside of this line right now. And I want to think about what fingering I'm using here. So I'm, I'm starting on one because I know I need to play that A above it, right? So the goal is to find that A in tune. That's just about the hardest thing to do with this, this line, is to find that note in tune. If you can already do that, you're halfway there, right? Um, and two, uh, I, I see that we have some comments. Just again, I want to like reiterate, please ask some questions, leave some comments. Uh, if it's your first time here, I check them all at the end um, and we can discuss whatever. But specifically, if we can talk about Israel in this bass line, that would be really cool. If you have any good Israel Crosby stories too, I would love to hear them. So we've got... Right? So this is the triplet. And the line itself, so, let's try that in time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, go. Let's extend that. Let's go down lower. One, two, three, go. So that way we can expand this line a little bit further. Cool. And that's what I have written here. I didn't pull that up, but that's what we're doing here. If we were to do that in B flat. One, two, three, go. Right? So that's the same. That's that momentum, you know, that the triplets moving forward. Really give that line its drive, right? Okay. So let's check out. Here is the extend the lick extended in register. Okay. So if you're getting this under your fingers, that's great. Think about what fingering you're doing, uh, how you're using this, and think about the landmarks that we're using. We're hitting the again. We're hitting the five, the three. We're going down the major triad. The root, the fifth, the third, the root, and the fifth. Because now we're extending this line. We're going to open it up and use it in our own bass lines. Okay, so try this with me. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, go. Right, so that gives us, that gives us more of this momentum, this, more of this bass line. Let's just play that through a few times. One, two, one, two, three, go. Again, we're hitting a scale step above. And that's about as low as we can go because we don't I don't have a low C extension. So if you do, go for it. Alright, so we're hitting scale above. And then the triad. Scale above, triad, scale above, triad, scale above. So one, two, three, go.
didn't quite make it on that last one. Okay, so I've also got some of this stuff written up here in B flat. Now, let's take this and try to move this around in a few different keys, okay? So it's the same thing, this is the, the scale step above, right? I really want to get this under my fingers. Just in general, this is good stuff for bass lines, also for soloing. Um, and just, you know, the more that we understand this more active, active eighth note line and triplet lines, maybe like what we're hearing other musicians play that we're playing with, that can affect our bass lines, if that makes sense. You know, so the more we understand about like more active lines above like quarter notes and walking and stuff like that, it can really help us to interact with the other musicians that we're, that we're playing with, right? And to be um, educated with what we're saying back. I don't know if that makes any sense, but hopefully it did. So we're trying to get to the, here in B flat, we're gonna hit the fifth, the third, the root, the fifth, the third, the root. Try it with me, okay? So one, two, one, two, three, go. Again, two, three, go. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Six, five, four, three, two, one. One, two, three, go. Oh. Right? Let's try this same idea. I'm going to take this off the screen now. We just hit, uh, we hit C. We hit F. So if we go around the cycle of fourths, and the cycle of fourths is a whole, uh, whole other thing to practice too. Uh, basically when we go like C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, E, A, D, G, C. That's the cycle of fourths, right? Uh, and we can get into that definitely another day. But we want to be able to do that through each of these keys, and that's a good way to do it. So let's cycle that around a little bit, but using if y'all, if anybody here was there for my first uh, uh, guided practice session, we were doing triads. I like to think in range specifications. So let's make G the highest note that we're going to play for any of these keys. Okay. So let's go into the key of F. So the highest note that we're going to be able to play is G in this case. So I'm going to go G F D C B flat A G C uh, G F. Right. I'm going to try to hit the triad, like. Let's do scale step above, right? So one, two, three, go. Again. Good. We hit B flat already. Uh, let's do E flat. So the highest note that we can do that's inside of the range that I just uh, said I would do. I'm going to try to stick to that. Uh, is uh, F and E flat. So let's play the E flat, B flat, G, E flat, B flat, G. But scale step above in this Israel Crosby rhythm. So one, two, one, two, three, go. Again, three, go. Let's see if we can uh, get in this other element that we were doing earlier, where we're doing the triad below, the triad note below where we're heading, as in doing. So here I'm trying to get to E flat, the one. So before that, I want to put the five and then the scale step. So five, scale step above, go. Three, scale step above, go, which is the fifth scale step above to the third, right? Fifth, scale step above to the root. Can we do that? Let's try it. So one, two, one, two, three, go. One, two, three, four. You can go further, of course, right? Right? Okay, let's try it in A flat. And we're of course leaving out some of the elements. We're leaving out that triplet that's that's integral to the line. But we're working it out, right? Let's do A flat. One. So the highest note that we're gonna do is the E flat. So we're gonna hit E flat, C, A flat, E flat, C. And we can do A flat down here. 
other two, right? Let's try it. So this is scale step above, and then the triad note below where we're heading. One, two, one, two, three, four. Oh, I need to shed this. Right, that's kind of the point of all this too, right? So I'm thinking, I'm doing the third, scale step above to the fifth, root, scale step above to the third, fifth, scale step above to the root, third, scale step above to the fifth, root, scale step above to the third. Right, and so it's got this flow. Kind of, I mean, it's coming straight out of, I mean, it sounds like something Bach would, ever, would write in his left hand. So one, two, three, four. Again. Okay, so do you have that under your fingers? Let's try adding in the triplet idea now. I'm gonna work on it at least. Two, three, four. See, see how it's related? So now I'm putting it. That's the triad. Scale step above. Scale step above, scale step above. But other than that, it's this. Right? The triad itself. Five, three, one, three. Now with the line, the scale step in it. Three, four. Cool, right? Okay, let's do the same thing to D flat now. Let's just keep moving. Let's try to get through them all. We're in D flat, the highest note that I want to deal with just for the moment. And you can take this range however you want. But I'm going to hit F. So I'm going to hit F, D flat, A flat, F, D flat. Could hit the A flat down here because you got. So let's hit F, D flat, A flat, F, D flat, A flat. Okay? So scale step above first, just a. triad note underneath each one of those goals. So what I mean again is I'm hitting, um, going to hit the root below the root is the fifth below the below the fifth is the third below the third is the root below the root is the fifth, right? One, two, three, four. triplet idea. Remember, that's just the triad. Gotta think about fingering wise. Kind of fudged the end of that, but we're practicing, right? Let's try it again. One, two, three, four. How am I doing this? Yeah. Ah, so that would I would probably do that. Keep it all in here and not go to the B flat. It's up here on the E string. Because I want to catch this F down here. B flat, A flat, all right there. All right. Moment of truth, let's go to G flat. Again, this is the Israel Crosby lick from Ma Jamal's Live at the Pershing, but not for me. Classic seminal recording. Just go ahead and learn like every note of the bass line of this recording. Just go ahead, go ahead. It's gonna be really good for you and it's super fun. It's a great recording to play along with. Get your, get your um, you know, bass line vibe going. And everybody, every musician loves the way Israel Crosby plays bass. Like across the board, it's not just bass players that are nuts about Israel Crosby. So figure out why, figure out what makes it so good, you know, like what makes it so swinging and just like perfect. 
good thing. But I'm just stalling. Let's go into G flat. <laughs> so G flat, I don't want to go up to the A flat because I don't want to play out of tune on YouTube. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Let's start it on the fifth. So the D flat, B flat, G flat, D flat, B flat. So let's make that our triad. Try it with me. So one, two, three, go. I'm not going any lower because I don't have a low D flat below that G flat to complete the line. Make sense? So now let's do scale step above. One, two, one, two, three, four. I could do that, but I can't go, I can't complete the line later. So now let's try in the, the chord tone below where we're heading. So I'm, head, I'm starting on the fifth, so I'm going to put in the third below it. Now five. Now three. Now root. So I didn't get it out in time, that was the root. Okay, then we'll add in the triplet element again. on that last one. Right? Okay, so hopefully you're with me on board with this up to this point. I see I've got some comments too, and I definitely am going to bounce in there really soon, but I want to hit B, E, A, D, and G just real quick. I'm just going to work on the whole line. Practice it along with me, okay? Um, so what did I say? I'm going to do it in B. All right. But let's do this. Let's uh, let's start on F sharp up here. It's just a it's really close by to the original key of C, right? So let's just play the line itself without the extended range, okay? And think about like heading to the two, just like Israel Israel does in the original line. And again, if you're just joining us, all of the all of the worksheets and sheets that you can use that I'm using for this, they're all down below. Just click click on that, and you can find a, a link to Dropbox, I think, that'll have all that stuff there. And uh, also, stay tuned, I've got a, a course coming out on Open Studio not too long from now called The Building Blocks of Bass, where we just talk about all good upright bass stuff, you know, like how to hold the bass, how to get the bass to sound good, both in the way that it's set up and with your hands and with your ears. Uh, just crucial stuff, walking bass lines, playing with the bow. You know, if you've got a question, if, you, if you're new to bass, likely I cover it in this course. I hope I do at least. That was my goal and intention. So check it out, Building Blocks of Bass. It's coming up in Open Studio Network, or Open Studio Jazz, excuse me. And uh, there will be more to come. So just keep your eyes peeled for that. Without further ado, let's do the Israel Crosby Lick and B. Ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. So I want to get to that. I'm kind of I'm kind of neglecting the last little line because the original line is this. So he's going six five three one two of the next chord or the two which is the next chord. So if I think about it in uh, B. Now, if moving around in fourths is tricky for you too, just move it in half steps, move it in whole steps. That being said, you know, we just did it in uh, B. You could move down to B flat, think the same fingering. So a lot of times when you're shifting, especially half steps, you can get away with using the same fingering. If you go around in fourths, you've got to kind of rethink things, but then go back through and move it in half steps. So what if I did the same fingering for B flat? Whoa, again. I just did it again. Right, that's where it's heading. Okay, but I'm kind of stalling. Let's go into E. So if I'm doing the actual lick and I'm thinking about it in uh, in E, I want to start from the fifth. So. 
you could find this B up here, it's going to be. That's the idea, right? Oh. There we go. Two, three, go. I think I would have practiced this stuff before coming online, but here we are, we're practicing it together. So I want to go. Nope. So when I get to this B. Okay. And I keep failing this too. Let's do it in A. One, two, three, go. That one sits a little bit better. Try with me. One, two, three, again. Right? Okay. Let's try it in D. Do we have enough space in here? I don't want to go super high. So uh, in D for the fifth. Find this A. One, two, one, two, three, go. Let's try it again. One, two, three, again. One more time, just for it's a fun key. So one, two, three, go. All right, let's do it in G, then we'll be all the way through. Just one more key to go. Are you with me? So we're trying to hit the fifth. We're doing this based off the original lick. So the, this D right here is where I'm going to start. One, two, one, two, three, go. Again, three, four. Right? And that's where that would go. So that is the Israel Crosby lick put through its paces, kind of dissected. Remember, it's coming. It's all based around a triad. Five, three, uh, one, five, three, and then heading to the next chord. It's got the scale step above. Also, the triplets are in there, all based around the triad, right? So it's doing scale step above into the triad note, triplet from the triad, scale step above. And it just keeps repeating that, right? So you can put that in your lines, you can change it around, you know, it doesn't have to be the triplets. Uh, there's a lot of options that you can go, you know, a lot of places you can go with that, right? So, but one of the key points is, if you hear something that you like, figure it out. You know, use your ears, listen to it a bunch, um, ask somebody, you know, if you have a teacher, ask your teacher. If you've got a, like somebody else you know that plays bass or whatever instrument we're talking about, ask somebody, you know, there's nothing wrong with like help, we all need help, so. Find a good teacher, go look for the solution, and then you can put it on, on your instrument and work on it, you know? So don't be shy about stuff like that. I'm only saying that because I used to be shy about stuff like that. <laughs> but it's totally cool. All right? So I'm going to jump into the comments really quick, and hopefully everything is, is nice. Yeah, Alexandra, what's up? Good to see you here. If you're still here, thanks for tuning in again. Yep, and she's talking about this. This is one of my three copies of this, actually. Um, this is a, uh, this is like, kind of like finding that, uh, Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass album at Goodwill. It's just like, this album is out there, you know, maybe you shouldn't go to Goodwill quite yet with the, the pandemic going on, but this album's out there. And, you know, actually I got this one at the great, uh, at the, well, the record exchange, but uh, I know I've got a copy for vintage vinyl and I know I've found a couple good copies at Goodwill, good old Goodwill Industries, their record label always banging. So you can find this yeah, and then you just got to get a record player I guess so but of course it's you know I'm sure um, I just want you to hear it go to YouTube listen to it if you've not heard it go you go buy it on iTunes okay so Ahmad's still kicking uh, man I got to see him last year and it was incredible 
great Herlin Riley on drums, uh, James Kamat, and I, Manalo Badrena on percussion. It was so cool. It was just so killing. So, uh, cool. This is Martin from the Alps. Amazing bass playing on that record. Absolutely, right? That's just, it's just inspired playing. And there's so much joy in all of this, in this whole recording too. Um, playing along with this record is one of my favorite things to do. I mean, it's just like, uh, you immediately feel better just listening to it, but then you're playing with it. Uh, that's, that's something else, you know? So getting the vibe. Uh, and Martin goes on, you're talking about the transcriptions. Yeah, definitely, of the bass lines of that recording. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think I've seen that too, where uh, somebody has a thesis uh, or a doctoral uh, dissertation or whatever it's called uh, online. You can find it on Scribd or something like that. But uh, that's all really cool. His note choices are incredible. But a lot of what's coming through on these recordings just can't be written out, right? It's kind of like the way that uh, lines in a, uh, in a play are are produced, you know, like they can be written down, of course. You could read the, whatever it's called, is it a screenplay? Um, what is it, the script? Whatever, um, but it's how you say what it is you're saying, right? So if we're reading it, you know, that's awesome and any information coming in is a good thing, for sure. But it's definitely key to go right to the source, you know? I make a terrible analogy with my younger students of like, if you have a lead sheet or a transcription, you can look at it and that's, the equivalent of a crayon drawing of the, the Mona Lisa, for instance, you know? Sure, it kind of like, you could do something with <laughs> crayons and it's like, oh, that's the Mona Lisa. But it's nothing compared to like the actual, the actual thing, right? That's, anyways, I don't know. Your comment said nothing about that and I just kind of went off on that, so. <laughs> yep, so yeah, if anybody have, hey, it's my buddy William Jaffe. What's up, William? Great young bass player here in St. Louis. In the Jazz St. Louis program, the Jazz U program. Haha, -ha, I learned this like yesterday from a Wynton Marsalis recording of What Is This Thing Called Love? Cool, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and so the bass player, I don't want to guess who was playing on that recording you're talking about, uh, but we can look it up and figure that out because I really want to. Um, but yeah, most likely they were referencing Israel Crosby. Israel Crosby, Israel Crosby. That's, that's the cat. Um, I mean, you know, if anybody anybody knows places where he might have gotten it from, please let me know too. That's um, you know the history of of you know nothing. Uh, there's nothing that comes out of nothing. You know what I mean? Israel Crosby was listening to bass players. Who was he listening to? Was this line learned from them? Do you know what I mean? So um, great one, William. Really like that. Music is my pleasure. What's up, France? You're back. I, I've seen you before before here. What's up? Okay, Robert Rodriguez was just thinking about learning this line after transcribing the Poinciana bass line. Beautiful. Oh, great timing. Well, you know, I'm glad it, I'm glad it worked out, you know? Glad it was able to come through for you here. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, that Poinciana, the whole album, of course. I don't need to sell it. This is like Ahmad Jamal's album. It's been sold a billion times, so. Uh, what is this? From Pittsburgh to the Pershing Orchestration Interaction Influence in the... Oh, is this the paper you were talking about? Okay, cool. Thank you, Martin. Awesome. Is there an edition where you can hear the bass well? Ah, an edition of the CD is what he goes on to say. I'm not sure about that, but the pitch is actually a problem. <laughs> so the recording, uh, for whatever reason, the pitch is off. And so if you tried to play like right along with it, it's a little bit hairy to do, like if you're, if you're tuned up to a tuner. Um, it can be like off-putting off because of the pitch. Uh, so I know that uh, another student of mine uh, got a recording that was pitch corrected uh, from the great piano player Emmett Cohen. I think he got it from Emmett. And, uh, my student Sam uh, said he got it. But um, there, it's out there. As far as that, in, uh, where, where, an addition where you can hear the bass well, I, I think you can. I mean, to my ears, you can hear it. You can hear it well on the record. Um, Maybe, I, I don't know, if it's more clear, maybe it's a live recording, you know, so there's something to that, but um, cool, what, is, what do we have here? Israel Crosby, his dates, ah, okay, like some studious research here, I love it, Martin, that, so that makes me think, uh, oh, it's a PhD on this period, love many lines of Israel Crosby, very cool, um, yeah, so, I mean, as, as musicians with the, the long history of jazz music, of course, we need to be, um, kind of like historians here, right? 
you want to check out the check out that's why we do transcriptions and listen to classic recordings and know where this is coming from do you know what i mean so um so doing stu studying uh the people that were influenced by reading biographies too it's one of my favorite listening to interviews watching interviews of these great musicians i i don't know if there is a a video recording i don't think there's a video recording of israel crosby being interviewed but um but there's definitely a lot of great information out there just to hear directly from the musician so check that out you know if you find something cool please let me know so alexandra's back up where does this fit into the chord progression so it's um that's a great question i did not address that too and i wish i could just play the track and be like here it is here it is but if you go listen, uh, go listen to the recording. Again, it's uh, Ahmad Jamal, Live at the Pershing, uh, But Not For Me is the name of the track. Um, it's, it's on the one chord. So basically, they've gotten... And there, when, it, when, the voc when the lyric is me... the melody they're writing songs for love of love but not for me right right etc so if you listen to the recording that'll come up but it's on the one chord okay so it's the one chord like kind of the end of the phrase and leading just beautifully into the next phrase okay all right, so I know I'm going long here, and I'm about to wrap this up. Dom, I appreciate this so much. Thank you, Dom. I appreciate you writing that. Awesome. Tune in again. Okay, so Chris writes, hey, what's up, Chris? How are you? I love how this lesson circles back around to your first guided practice session on arpeggios in all keys and ranges. Great. Yeah, it shows the utility of knowing your arpeggios in all 12 keys. I couldn't have said it better. Thank you, Chris. Absolutely, yeah. We really want to have a depth of, of understanding and everything that we're studying, right? As much as we can. And that definitely, going through different keys, helps us to retain it, to use it, and to really feel it, um, honestly, you know? So if we're, you know, it just, it really helps us in a bunch of ways. So, but I'm glad, yeah, it does go back to uh, the, the triads. For me, everything goes back to triad. Even if we're doing a scale, like basically, if we're talking, and I'll just do this real quick, Sam, or Andrew, I'm not trying to keep you, but <laughs> I'm just going to go through this real quick. So if we talk about the C major triad, C, E, G, C, that's the triad, right? That's what's up. Now, if we connect the dots between each of those notes, then we get a scale, right? And it could be almost any kind of scale that's a major triad, based off a major triad. So scale note leading here, that's just leading here. And these notes are leading here. That's the major scale, right? That's To me, that's the point of the major scale. But we can change that. We could, we could almost do anything inside of those points, but if we really know, the point I think is to know those triads, major, minor, augmented, diminished. And really I wanna go deeper into all of that with these guided practice sessions, because we hit the major ones, but we've not hit the minors yet. We've not hit augmented, and we definitely need to hit diminished. So anyways, shed all of those. I should get going, um, but thank you so much for joining me this week. We'll see you next Monday and keep your eyes peeled for the Building Blocks of Bass course coming out on Open Studio. Um, highly recommended, of course. It was done by a great bass player, me. No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, so great to see you. Have a great week. See you next time. Peace.